So here we've managed to use this cutting edge nanotechnology to essentially capture these long tubed irises in the very act of speciation and we've managed to do so in a very threatened uh, felt type called uh, sand plain feinbos in um, Mamra on the west coast of South Africa and we've also managed to do so using an extremely charismatic pollinator, a fly with a tongue of about six centimeters in length. So these long tubed irises uh, called Laparisia anseps, as the name suggests, they have these really long tubes and the tubes are adapted to the morphology of their pollinators. So their pollinators also have long tongues. So in about 2003, we found a very strange population which had some individuals with very long tubes and some individuals with very short tubes. And it begs the question, how do these two uh, morphs, if you want to call it that, uh, manage to coexist? there clearly must be some kind of barrier to gene flow occurring uh, which stops the pollen from shorts and longs from landing up on one another. So we had a hunch that uh, these flies were carrying pollen from short and long tube plants but just on different parts of the body. The problem is that because these plants are so recently diverged the pollen from the short tube plants and the long tube plants look identical. I had this uh, incredible PhD student uh, Cornel Minar who decided to work on this problem and he designed a method to m label and actually track pollen grains in space using fluorescent particles called quantum dots. So Mamra seems to be a hotbed for plant evolutionary studies because normally when you see plants that diverged long ago and it's very difficult to tell uh, the processes by which they actually did diverge and this is different we've managed to capture these plants as they're speciating and it's wonderful because we're able to then uh, look at the process of speciation and uh, identify what causes plants to speciate.